Welcome to Wall Street Confidential. I'm George Moriarty here with Jim Kramer. Jim, how are you doing? All right. All right. Rough day yesterday. Right. Um, you know, very interesting though. We're up a little bit today, and nobody's coming out. Certainly, you haven't called no. out, come out and said the bottoms here. No, and I like to think of bottoms as staged. You know, I've always found that they drop in stages and come back in stages. And there's one third of a market usually bottoms first, then another third, another third. But um, I don't say that that start. You know, that that's what happens when when we start selling off. It's what happens when we're done selling off. And I may miss the bottom of a sell off. But my methods are uniquely involved to try to minimize downside, not to catch upside. Upside takes care of itself. Now, I've been looking at certain stocks I've been, that are keying off of National Semi and Texas Instruments, New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange because it's a really hated stock. I'm looking at that because there's a piece of news out there that's very positive, which is that uh, Daily Deal is saying that the Justice Department is, is going to block CME uh, uh, CBOT unless they get rid of clearing, which is what the New York Stock Exchange really wants is clearing. And the fact that that stock isn't bottoming on that piece of news after a big analyst day is telling me, be careful of, these, uh, of the financials, of the brokers, of anything in that ilk. And that's the group need, that needs to bottom first. Forget what will bottom first, but the financial and financial derivatives need to bottom first because they're trading off the tenure, and it's the tenure that's causing the sell-off. Each sell-off is different. The sell-off in February was a Chinese sell-off. Right. That's very different from a sell-off that's involved with the tenure. So because each sell-off has a different coloration, you can't just say, okay, one-third is going to be ATT and Kellogg. And you can't do that. People want me to do that. I can see that in stock here. They want me to do that. Right. And, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't play that way. I, I'm not looking for a way to call a bottom. I'll call a bottom if I see it. Now, stick into the NYX corollary because mm -hmm. I think that's a good example. Right. Give them a concrete example. Where are we? So they didn't bottom here. We've had a sell-off for some time now. Um, you know, if it's still it's selling off until today. I see a lot of put buying, whether it be at 60 or 70. So that's, that's a strike. A lot of put buying underneath. Yeah, that, that causes me to sit up and take notes. That hasn't happened yet. There's still too much hope. There still need to be more people selling. Uh, maybe it needs to get to a 15 multiple instead of 25. Uh, I am very sanguine about stocks. I, I find that since I started the street.com, it's, it's really impossible to stay sanguine because there's so many uh, cat callers and, na uh, and name callers when you get something wrong. And that's not, you have to tune that out. And now what I like to do is say, okay, listen, bet against me. Right. I'm not going to sit here and argue my case over and over again. Just bet against me. You think I'm wrong, please buy puts, short it. Don't ask me to convince you because, I, I mean, I've been around. And life is not about convincing people to your viewpoint. Life is about saying, you believe in your point, I believe in my point. I'm not trying to compromise. I, if I compromise, that means I sell Balsh and Loam at 47. A compromise, that means I sell Alcan at 43. Because what I'm doing is listening to people who know less than I do and have less conviction than I do but love to throw stones. And, you know, that's very personal. I, I do a lot of stuff. It's Wall Street Confidence. I do things very personal. But um, I don't want to argue my case anymore after my pr preliminary case. Right. Um, I want It's incumbent upon others to tell me uh, why they think they should short it. But I'm not going to respond to should I short. To the national semi point that you made mm -hmm. earlier, why is it – that's leading the S&P, you Nat, say. Yeah, Nat Semi's leading the S&P, and I don't want that um, because Nat Semi, see, we learned from analog devices that Nat Semi is uh, zero sum with analog. So it's entirely possible the strength that, that Nat Semi has is another company's weakness. It's not the rising tide that I want to see. The only stocks that I care to really own te in tech right now are the four, my new four horsemen, Research in Motion, uh, Amazon, which is the most controversial of those. Uh, I, I need to own, I want people to own Google and I want them to own Apple. Fantastic. Now, and just we know on Apple, because there's, again, there's a lot of confusion. Why is there confusion about the things that I do here? And the confusion is, is that I'm a professional. It's not that I don't know what I'm doing. It's the, uh, I'm a professional. And a professional knows that if you have a pattern and the pattern keeps happening, an event occurs and the stock sells off. So you have to say, okay, listen, last time I got to the event, I'm going to be smarter than the average bear, and I'm going to sell it as it gets the event and then prepare to, to buy it. It is not a judgment on the company. People always want to make the company be the stock. That's a major mistake that professionals never make. And they miss the context, which is, I think, an important part of all of this, is looking at where we are in the broad market, in the particular right. stock, right. wherever you are, don't focus on one minute. Focus right. on the large picture, where you are right. in the stage of a sell-off. Right. I mean, what I would hope people would do, but has, I have been unsuccessful in doing this in the vast majority of the time that I've worked here and worked here for 10 years, is to be able to convince people that I am not the anomaly. I am the way professionals trade. 
I was schooled by professionals. I was taught by professionals. And this is the way professionals trade. And, uh, and why you don't know that is because no one else is going to be fool enough to tell people. But right. I do not look at Apple and say, do I like Apple or not? Uh, product's great. I love Apple. You know, big deal. I look at the piece of paper. And the piece of paper has gone down after we've had big announcements. So I can't bet that this time will be different because that's not what a professional does. Right. There you go. That's Wall Street Confidential. That's the way professionals invest. Stay tuned for more from the street.com TV.